Center and happy holidays. It's the 2018 Turkey Trot Boys Hockey Tournament. We start the night at Plymouth Ice Center with the third place game as Holy Family Catholic takes on the Wyzetta Trojans, a host team. Both teams looking to bounce back after opening night losses. Good evening, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Dan Ficken. John Jacobson will join us ringside as well. And Dan, obviously the opening night didn't go quite as hoped for for both of these teams. Holy Family facing a very tough Edina team. They had a lead actually after one period, kind of got overwhelmed a little bit in the second. They gave up about 50 shots last night. Meanwhile, Wyzetta, they took a while to get started. They didn't play well early against Maple Grove, kind of settled things down as the game went, but both teams looking to get back on track here tonight. Yeah, Holy Family had a tremendous lead. They had 75 goals they lost last year and people graduating and going away. They actually came out playing pretty good, you know, got a one nothing lead on Edina. Had some severe mental lapses in the second period, gave up five goals, and you don't do that against the Diner. They'll make you pay. They rebounded well, played very well, got even in the second, third period, played them even, even though they lost. Maple Grove came out and just tore into Wyzetta right off the bat in the first period, and Wyzetta wasn't ready for it. They lost four of their top D last year, and that was responsible for it. So they built back, and then again, they played better every period after that, but it was too late by that time. So they're both looking to rebound tonight. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, obviously the guys who are new to the varsity have played a lot of hockey, but it's not always the same thing. You get out in front of a crowd, you're playing at you know the, t the highest level of, of high school hockey. So I think it's a, a good thing for both these teams to be able to jump back on the ice tonight, see what they learn, but also just to, to play a little more relaxed game too. Well, that's it. It's early in the season. You don't tell much by the first game. You want your kids to get experience. I mean, Holy Fam's got 13 sophomores they got to get some experience with. They play the top teams, get them ready to play. By January, different story. Now we're going to find out who can play, and they don't care if you're a junior, sophomore, or senior. Why is that the same thing? They've got a lot of juniors on the team, but they haven't played any varsity games. They need these games to get experience. So relax, sit back, play good competition, get better, learn from your mistakes, go practice, see the mistakes on film, and get better. This is a good game for both of them right now. They'll see what they learned from last night's mistakes. We've had the same four teams in the tournament for several years now, so a little bit of rivalry built up. These teams last year met in the third place game as well. Holy Family came out on top on that one, and as much as you can talk about, well, it's only November and the early part doesn't matter, you don't really want to start 0-2 either. Well, no. I mean, both these teams are very competitive, and they consider themselves elite teams in the state. So losses are not well liked on either one of these teams. They want to see more wins than losses. So they're going to play very hard and competitive. They're not going to look at a loss in this tournament as something they want at all. So they want to build now, tonight. They want to see the mistakes they made last night. Do not reflect on the game tonight. So you will see improved games from both of these teams tonight and may the best team win. All right, should be a good one here in the third place game later on tonight. It'll be Maple Grove and Edina for the Turkey Trot Championship. We'll be back with the start of the third place game in just a moment here on CCX Sports. Do you hear what I want? This holiday season, give the gift of self-love with a Simonson Salon and Spa gift card. Manicures, panicures, facials, massages. Delight everyone on your list with Express to Indulgent Spa experiences. A bonus gift is yours with qualifying in-store gift card purchase. Online gift certificates are also available. Visit Simonson's.com for more details. Oh, what fun it is to give at Simonson Salon and Spa. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. Welcome back here to Plymouth Ice Center as we get set for this third place game at the Turkey Trot Tournament as Holy Family and Wyzetta taking the ice. And 
as we talked about in the pregame, the theme really is kind of youth for both of these teams. Uh, you know, definitely a lot of new faces in the lineup for both programs. And I thought it was really interesting and, and uh, a good comment from Noel Ron, the Holy Family coach, Dan, that said, we're not going to shorten up our bench and go two lines no. to try and win games in the first few weeks of the season. We are building toward, you know, the end of February to be ready for section time. So if that means a few more losses along the way, then so be it. And I think that's what the, the top-level coaches yes. have to be thinking like. Yeah, and we know Pat O'Leary, the same thing over at Wyzetta, too. He always plays with those sections. He's done a marvelous job. He took a team in the state tournament with a losing record for heaven's sakes. See, the, uh, three times as a head coach brought the Trojans to the state tournament, including winning the championship in uh, 2016. And, and uh, ironically, both of these coaches both won NCAA titles as yes, well. Yes, they did. A gopher and a badger. So uh, pretty interesting to see that matchup today on the day when those two teams are playing in uh, a football matchup as well as you get a look at Noel Ron. Won a state title as a player for Edina, and they won a national title as a player early in his career at the University of Wisconsin. So two very accomplished coaches, and we said, but two very competitive guys, too. Oh, even, though yeah. you, even though you know you're building for later, you're still uh, coming out here. And, you know, you give credit, too, to Wyzetta for not just bringing in teams that they could win their tournament every year. They, they bring in good quality opponents for this tournament, and it means you're not going to win it all the time no. like they are not going to this year and they didn't last year as well. The stated purpose of this tournament is to get good competition to start out early to teach their players what good pace and what good competition is like. We'll take a quick time out. We'll come back with the drop of the puck here from the pick in just a moment. You're watching the Turkey Trot Tournament third place game on CCX Sports. Welcome back here to Plymouth Ice Center along with Dan Ficken and John Jacobson. I'm Jay Wilcox. We'd like to thank our telecast sponsors as well, Mombord's Garden Center and Nursery and Simonson Salon and Day Spa as Holy Family in their black with white and green trim and Wyzetta in the home whites. Bailey Huber played last night as well for Holy Family. They feel really good about him as a goaltender. Um, you know, the, sure, they gave up some goals last night, but they were playing Edina, and they didn't offer him a lot of help on a few of them, it sounded like. But season long, they are very confident with him as uh, their backstop, I think, Dan. Well, he had a 900 per save, save percentage last night, save 45 out of 50 shots. That's pretty doggone good. Trevor Wong played last night. Danny Fraga is going to get the start tonight for YZ. A pair of seniors, Coach O'Leary, said that was kind of the plan all along, unless Wong, you know, had a tremendous shutout in the first game and yeah. they were in the championship then maybe they would flip but uh, they plan to give both guys an opportunity early this weekend and and uh, you know like like some of the other wise other guys you know age wise they're not super young but it's, it's such a big program it's hard to break in so yeah. some of the guys even though they may be juniors or even seniors haven't played a ton of varsity hockey yet 
Yeah, they're going to try to check out and see. You know, again, this is going to be January decisions based on the play up to that point for both of these teams. So we'll see what we get. We are underway. Joel Matthews winning the opening draw there for Wyzetta. Pass stolen though by Dan Redden. And here come the fire as a shot by Trey Fetchko is smothered there by Fraga. And we will get a draw in the Wyzetta zone in the early going. I think that opening night, you're so jacked up. And that's good in a way, but it can be bad in a way with some mm -hmm. jitters and maybe trying to do more than you're capable of. I think you might see more of a, you know, what's going to be a typical early season performance for both of these teams tonight. Yeah, both teams gave up a lot of shots in the first period last night. I don't think that'll happen again tonight. They will tighten up defensively first. Matthews keeping it in, throws it out front as he tried to find Luke Fairchild there cutting through, and now the fire coming back the other way. Garrett Kinanimi with it here. The junior who was committed to the Gophers actually early on was committed to St. Cloud State. And I think the Bob Motzko move uh, down 94 might have influenced his uh, choice to swing to the Gophers. Redden dropping the pass back. Now dumped on in here by Sawyer Schugel. Coach Ron was telling us, I think we'll be quite strong in the next couple of years. We've got a lot of freshmen and sophomores in their program that are good, but they're yeah. just going to take a little bit of seasoning here on the varsity level. Well, the biggest difference in your varsity, obviously, is speed and decision-making. Sawyer so Schugel dropping it back. Here's the shot. Frag of the save on the attempt there from Spencer Lewin. Lewin coming over to get it here for Holy Family. Drop it back to the point. That one never made it there. It's loose in the slot. And the Trojans able to get to it. And now a chance for a two-on-one. Ryan Mulrennan leading the rush. But a nice play to get back and break it up. And then it goes up out of play. Charchen Nikolai Charchenko got back to get a piece of that one for Holy Family to take away a potential scoring chance for the Trojans. So we saw a little bit of what Coach Ron was saying about mental mistakes. Holy Family had a good opportunity, but all three forwards got sucked down underneath the faceoff dots and left a two-on-one opportunity on their D here for the Wazetta Trojans. Couldn't quite put it all together. One pass got stuck by the Holy Family D. Huber, the save, gave up a juicy rebound, but now it pops out, and here comes the Holy Family. Mark Lund carrying it up the right side here. He's forced wide. Now turning the corner, but that pass was blocked. And Wyzetta trying to get something started with that flow pass up the middle. Now they'll regroup again and swing it back all the way around the horn. Kyle Mortensen getting the pass back there to Tommy Bergslund, one of the more experienced Wyzetta players, one of their captains. Chopped away here and down in the corner. Keep in mind, this is the second season that uh, Plymouth Ice Center's main rink, the A rink here, has, uh, is a standard NHL size rink, whereas it had been, for the life of the uh, building, had been an Olympic rink. It was converted in, uh, in time for last high school season. So I, was, I found that kind of interesting, Dan, because at the time the building was built, it was kind of like, that's going to be the hot new thing. Everybody's going to want an Olympic yeah. rink, and that's the yeah. direction we're going, and now we've reversed. Yeah, just kind of died out now, and a lot of these Olympics are converting back to National Hockey League size rings. Face off here in the Holy Family Zone. No score on the board, no real chances to speak of yet in the early going here. This is the third place game of the CCX Tricky Trot Tournament hosted by the Wyzetta Trojans. Back down to the corner it goes. And Holy Family will try and reverse it around here to Cole Wilson. He took a bump. Trojans able to keep it in. Good stick work along the line as they kept it in the offensive zone. And now Luke Monet up with it, trying to put it out front. He missed hit the pass, though. And Holy Family coming back. Pass to the front. Ooh. Oh, and couldn't Amy just missing there. Looked like not like the rush had kind of broken down, but all of a sudden the pass got out front. Now the defenseman walking in, and a nice shot attempt there by Michael Spinner, but Fraga able to close the door there and hang on. So first good opportunity of the game there going for, as you get a look here at uh, Cole Wilson just flinging that backhand pass. It looked like it was behind him, and but he got to it and nearly put it away. Well, Wilson was the goal scorer, goal scorer last night for Holy Family. Got in their only goal, made a nice behind-the-back pass. 
the enemy on the front and created a good opportunity. They're without Lucas Jorgensen tonight, who's out. He had been uh, meshing well, uh, according to uh, Coach Ron, with Finn and Emmy over the summer and everything. So that uh, a situation where they're a little bit shorthanded. Pass off the skate. Here comes Fetchko to the middle. Finn and Emmy with it. Whips it back across, and a glove catch off the shot from Dan Redden as Holy Family getting a few opportunities here in these last couple shifts as they kind of settle in and get their offense going a little bit. Well, they're putting their passes together and uh, starting to get some shots. Well, that has had some opportunity, but they just have missed the pass. It's just been a little bit off, and they'll get into the flow as they go, but Holy Family right now starting to put it together a little bit more in the offensive zone. They control it here. The pass thrown a little behind and into the corner. Coach Ron said one of the things he liked about the third period they, against the Dino last night is they started spending more time in the attack zone and, and working the puck a little bit more against the uh, the Hornets. Said they really had a good film session too. He was able to, you know, it's one thing when you just come back to the bench and your coach points something out, but when you you know you get it on video a little bit, I think they kind of understood some yes. of the some of the mistakes that they had made, maybe mental mistakes or or misjudging a little bit of Udina's speed and that type of thing where you you know you see it from above a little exactly. bit you can kind of kind of you know gets in your head a little bit better about what exactly they mean. Especially the young kids too you know and a lot of times they can see the spread of the ice on the film better than they could on the ice. So far Frega showed up pretty good for the Trojans right now he's he's holding his uh, angles well and he's playing out outside the crease well. Holy Family wins the draw. That one didn't make it to the net, though. It was a shot block. Here comes Hayden Davison up the left side for Wyzetta, and he fires, and Huber will close the pads up there and hang on. So quite a few whistles in the early going here as uh, goaltenders have been hanging on, freezing the puck. Haven't had great flow to this one. It's been all right, but they're uh, a little uh, choppy. Yeah, a little bit of a, a little choppy. I think that's not terribly unexpected, too, on this first weekend. And, you know, it's kind of the catch-22. Everybody have been pushing to play more games <laughs> for the high school season, but at the same time, you don't have much practice before these first ones because the first few days are generally tryouts, especially, yep. you know, in a, in a program the size of Wyzetta. You get some real decisions to make on tryouts. You can't skimp on that part of it. So then you really only get, uh, you know, probably three, four good days of practice before you're out here on the ice for this tournament. Well, exactly, and those first few days of trials, you know, your core, your guys you know are going to make the team don't play that much. So they're, they're rusty. They're shaking off some rust right now. Wyzetta gaining control, trying to get something set up here. Max Breon drops the pass off. Oh, and a shot just up and over the top there from Davison. Now thrown toward the net and knocked down. And it rolls back out to center there. It's picked up by Jake Snyder, leaving it for Bergsland, and he'll relay it on in as Wyzetta finishing a line change. Huber back to stop it. Ooh, near takeaway there. Oh, it's going to be a penalty, though, on Wyzetta's Luke Monet as he got the hook in. He saw an opportunity, he thought, to uh, pick the defenseman's pocket, but he is going to go for a hook. Uh, good opportunity here for Holy Family. Now, the one thing we get misnomered about, and we'll watch the hook coming up here, right up in there, and he kind of gets it, pulls him over, gets him off balance a little bit. Obvious hook. Holy Family last year, power play was pretty good, 23%. I don't know. Early in the season, though, you don't get a chance to work on it. You're just trying to put your team together. That won't really come to fruition until probably January, where it's really looking good. You got the right guys in the right place, but. As you can see right there, kind of, I thought he was there. Well, I'm getting the puck again. Matthews in interception and then lost it. Carried here by Shugel. Shugel slams the brakes on, back out to the point, and then they go high, and there's a nice shot block. It's a, why is that a trademark? <laughs> Coach O'Leary was uh, chuckling a little bit, saying when Maple Grove made a key block last night. Kind of their own medicine there. There's a pass just off the heel of the stick of Luke Fairchild. And then he runs into Huber, who didn't like it. But everything settles down and back up ice comes to the enemy for Holy Family. He takes a bump from Birdsland. 
Minute 10 to go on the power play here for Holy Family. They've struggled to get it set up in the attack zone so far here. They're getting some traffic out front. Back across now to Spinner. He'll leave it for Pinanimi. Walking it in, and his pass. It comes all the way over to the weak side, but the shot goes wide from a tough angle there. And then clear down the ice here for Bayezetta, and they will change at least part of their penalty kill unit here. Under 40 to go in the man advantage for Holy Family. No score on the board. The third place game here in the Turkey Trot Tournament from Plymouth Ice Center. Maple Grove and Edina will meet for the title coming up later tonight. Yeah, it's the one trademark was that has always had in the pad. Oh, they're great penalty killing. They were at 79% last year. You can see it here, too. You, you don't get much of a look under the Trojans. Pass out front there. Just didn't quite connect. Ten to go on the power play, and it'll pop back out to center. And quickly on, there, Ben Lutke there, able to free it up. He caught the defenseman unaware that he was there. And now the penalty is over. Wyzetta will bring it back out and look to attack here. Lofted on in, and they'll finish a change. And back to it first there is Charchenko. Now it rolls out to center, thrown back in. Wyzetta has to touch up. Charchenko. Now the breakout here as they get it over to Tefetchko. Bergslund will swing it around now, looking for Wagi. Ooh, nearly gave it away there. Right for it at the blue line, a stick loss there for Parker Ganassa of Holy Family. Redden up with it. Redden carrying it in, fires, and Fraga has to make a stop there as Redden had some momentum straight up the middle of the slot there and got away a pretty decent attempt. Redden, one of the better defensemen here in the state, comes across the line and just lines it up and gets just under the stick of the D and gets a good shot up. That almost skipped under the, the arm there. Fraga. Did a good job controlling the rebound, too, though, on that yeah. one, which he's been doing so far. And that'll be an unfortunate hand pass there. Why is that a thing? But it happened in our D zone, but started the breakout back the other way. I remember when we were talking to Coach O'Leary, I was thinking about the, the pluses and minuses of being host to this tournament. Obviously, you like to play on your own rank, you're in your own locker room, but at the same time, I think he. I think there's a little more pressure on Lizetta in front of their home crowd maybe than for those other teams just a little bit. You know, they're, they're coming out, they're excited, and then you know, the first game doesn't go the way you want it to. I think they're, that part of it is, is uh, you know, could be a bit of a tougher spot for them than the other three. Yeah, you may be right. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, the one thing though about, about Pat, though, I, yeah, he just, he gets the whole season. He really understands that. That's, that's why you got that big banner sitting up there. And he's been in convention for state pretty much since he's been here. He's, he's a heck of a coach. Bergslund floating it out front and looking for the tip was 1A there, but couldn't get a piece of it. And now back the other way. Chance for two on one. Penalty coming against Wyzetta. Pass out front. Oh. And apparently not in. Hit the pipe. I thought that Mark Lund had scored there. But he just hit the pipe. There is, though, a penalty coming against Wyzetta. Right as the two-on-one was developing, they had to throw in a hook there to uh, halt the momentum of that one a little bit. As you see the turnover. Oh, the patience, the patience, the patience here. Look at this now. The pass just oh. there, and it did hit the post. Oh, my gosh. What a nice, nice play, though. Just held on, held on until they could finally get an opening. Boggy will go for a hook. I was going to say it was a necessary penalty, although he didn't really yeah. stop the rush either, though. Yeah. But uh, it, it all, all works out in the end. Here's another look. Boy, from the angle I had here, I mean, it was like I was so sure that it was going in. That yeah. <laughs> just for a second. And I, I think uh, uh, fair to say Mark Lund, like me, thought that one was definitely going in. He looked up and was like, oh. Oh, man. How did that not go in? You're thinking to yourself that goal post is a heck of a lot skinnier than the rest of the net, but somehow I hit it. So the fire back to the power play. They have played well in this first period. 
getting the better of things so far. I think you'd have to say they have outshot Wyzetta eight to three. And both penalties have been taken by Wyzetta here in about the last four minutes. Pass a little behind to the Nimi and then hammered back out. Carried now by Spinner. Spinner working it right up the middle and that shot goes just wide. And an Emmy with it in the circle. Dropping it down low. Turnaround try there but it was blocked. Bergsland in the right spot there for Wyzetta and they throw it down the rink. Huber trying to send it a nice uh, hand eye coordination by Hayden Davison to knock that one down but. Holy family gets it right back as they start a rush here on the power play. 35 to go in the man advantage for the fire. You just see there's just some hesitation here by the flame. They can't, they just can't, or the fire, I'm sorry. They can't just seem to get, move it quick enough. Why is that as it seems to be anticipating and not giving them any space to move in. Tried to flip it back the other way. Bergsland there to intercept that and he finds an opening to drive it all the way down the ring. So under 10 to go in the power play here for Holy Family. Looks like Wyzetta will kill off a second consecutive minor penalty here in this first period. A little over five to play in the period and 0-0 our score. Metchko with it down in the corner. Now back out high. There's a nice Ooh. shot block by Mo Renan but then thrown back in. That's something the Fire D are going to have to be a little more conscious of not hitting Shin pads way out that high. It could be lead to trouble the other direction. Offside. Yeah, it looks like they didn't didn't clear the zone there. One of the fire players didn't realize that the uh, delayed offside sign was up. Yeah, we're we're looking at Wyzetta and the Trojans. This is something that that has always been brought to this team since back out there. They they're grinders. They block shots. They do you know the dirty work that needs to be done by a team, and uh, they've always been that way. And uh, right now it's kept the puck out of the net and uh, you have to say the fire has gotten the better of the opportunities but it's zero zero right now. Well and I feel like that kind of style is a little bit um, resistant to the ups and downs of whether you have great skill up front every year year in and year out too. That's the way you stop a really good good skilled team you just do the dirty work and grind it out. Oh man that's going to be a penalty coming up against Wyzetta as they'll take their third of this opening period as a Ben Ludke looked like he thought he saw an opening for a great uh, hip check there but not legal. So delayed penalty the net is empty for Holy Families they bring a six skater out here and an Emmy carrying it into the offensive zone slides it out front and Fraga trying to make a stop. Oh he did. And he did. He did. Good play by Fraga he comes out he got on that puck quick he knew he was a two on oh victim there. And he made the aggressive move and got out and stopped before that pass could come across. There's Lutke. Oh yeah, he oh definitely my. got the skate in there. That could have been a dangerous one. Nice move by the enemy right here. Coming across. Look at that play by Fraga. He just swallowed it up as quickly as he could. Nice play before that became really dangerous. So third penalty taken in this first period here by the Trojans as Lutke. That is not going to make the Trojan coaching staff happy. Two on two on the short oh. end of the rush here. A couple of nice moves with it by Matthews. And then he'll throw it all the way back down. Not really intentionally, but cleared away by Fraga. Redden back to get it here, but he's being pressured. They're working hard on the penalty kill. Good effort there by Luke Fairchild. Carried in here by Penny for Holy Family, and then a shot that went off a speed out front. Looking cross ice with it. The quick shot, Fraga fights it off and then chipped away, but not out. As they found some space for Spinner there. Now he shoots one that sails up and over the head of the goaltender and off the glass. Tarchenko swinging it across, gets it right back. They keep it moving. Penanemi shooting. That one caught the glass. Bodies sprawling in front there. 
Down to two and a half to play in the first period, and that pass spun away from Spinner there. No pun intended as it's uh, Charchenko now circling to wait. And then Amy will drop it off. He needs to get off on a change here. Thrown out front, shot there and goal. Go. Tucked away by Sawyer Shugel off a great feed from Fetchko, and it is one nothing, Holy Family. Fetchko made a great, great pass there and a really quick look. He kind of knew he was there, but he made a quick look and uh, got it across. A great pass, and he buried it. Number five here, look at him now. He's going to take a quick look, bang, and he gets it over there quickly. And Shugel just buries it. What a nice play that was. Let's go, the ninth grader. What a play. Coach Ron told us he had some young players that were quite skilled. That was a good hockey sight play of the full ice. Nice play. Let's go and Pinanemi will get the assist. Power play goal for the fire. Fourteen forty-eight of the first. Yeah, that third one was the killer right there. They killed off two really nicely, and that last one finally got him. The Trojans, I mean. Yeah, even if you you know are a good penalty killing team. You're, it kind of has a cumulative effect a little bit too. You're having to work hard to get, fight them off, and you're also getting out of rhythm with your rolling your lines a little bit too. Well, and I, you know, I don't care how good you are at killing penalties. It it takes takes the energy out of you. You get tired doing that. Battle for it in the corner here. Wyzetta has really not had much offensive zone time in this first period. Trying to get something going here late in the period. Back out to the point they come with it here. Go Timzik. Timzik uh, goes up and over the top here. 57 seconds to play now in this first period, and Holy Family leading it by a 1 0 count. Well, the other thing we're looking at, too, one of the advantages I think Holy Family's got, too, they've got three top notch D that have been there for a number of years that kind of their glue. And They've been making sure the front of that net gets cleared. Long pass that hops through everyone there, and it'll be icing against Holy Family. So we'll come back into a fire zone here. And you look at some of the young Wyzetta fans, and always a well-attended tournament here too. I think that you know, being on this Thanksgiving weekend, got some alumni home. You got family home or family in town and things yeah. too, and I think that definitely adds to it. Loose in front. Wyzetta trying to get an attempt away here out of the circle. And they'll keep control anyway. Back across, here's a shot, and that one bounces just wide. Matthews up with it for the Trojans, looking weak side. Oh, and it just hopped over the stick there of Fairchild. Spinner hustling after it, and the fire able to get it on out of there. Nice check thrown at center there by Monet for Wyzetta. Under 10 seconds to play here in this first period. Here's Matthews dropping the pass. Oh, and a nice read by Redden took it away. And the time is going to run out. So good first period of hockey here for the visitors as uh, Wyzetta takes a total of three penalties. And the third one burns them as Holy Family, I thought, kind of controlled the action for the yeah. most part in this first period, Dan. Yeah, well, the split in the shots is 13-3 in favor of the fire. And, uh, you know, Coach Ron said, too, he, in this tournament, he likes they all, his team seems to bounce back on the second night after a loss. And uh, the, they have. They've looked pretty good in this period. And I think sometimes, too, you you know, when you come into it with, with so much excitement for that first night, it can be a little bit hard. But that's... That's all part of it, you know. That's mm -hmm. why these teams play good schedules too. That you're not, uh, 
Yeah, you can't hang your head. There isn't much time to be thinking about last night when you're when you're out here tonight, or you'll get beat again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And they, you know, all these teams want to get better, and they want to get better right now. But they love all all the coaches we talked to here. They love this tournament just for the fact that there's good competition here. There's no taking the night off. They got to play good every night. So um, that's what makes it a good tournament to do and to broadcast too. We'll take a quick time out and come back with our first intermission here from the Plymouth Ice Center. Holy Family leading Wyzetta 1-0 here in the third place game. Do you hear what I want? This holiday season, give the gift of self-love with a Simons and Salon and Spa gift card. Manicures, panicures, facials, massages. Delight everyone on your list with Express to Indulgent Spa experiences. A bonus gift is yours with qualifying in-store gift card purchase. Online gift certificates are also available. Visit Simonsons.com for more details. Oh, what fun it is to give at Simons and Salon and Spa. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. Period in the third place game in the Turkey Trot Tournament. It's Holy Family one. Why is that a nothing? We're joined by Trojans head coach Pat O'Leary and Pat. First things first, your alma mater is about to win Paul Bunyan's axe for the first time in 15 years. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it came to the rink and uh, it was on in our locker room and it was 17 nothing in the first. And I was like, wow, that's they must have got out the buses uh, the right time this there, so it was good. All right, tell me about the, this first period. You fall, fall behind one nothing against a pretty good Holy Family team. Thoughts on your, this uh, period? Well, I mean, obviously, three penalties are going to kill you. Um, you know, I thought we played well when we weren't in the box. Uh, we killed the first two out pretty well. Uh, almost had that last one. But, I mean, against a talented team like this, if you're in the box, it's just going to be a long night. So that's what we're going to clean up in the second. And, uh, hopefully just play five on five and, you know, get back to where we need to be. You've been in this tournament, obviously, for a number of years as, as head coach. What is your goal always going into the tournament other than, you know, trying to get two wins? Well, I mean, you look at the atmosphere. It was here last night, and it was, it'll be packed again tonight. It's just getting these kids the ability to play in front of this kind of crowd. Not a lot of people get to do that. Um, you know, just get them on the ice and play real games. You know, the people that practice for two weeks, I'm sure the kids are itching to play. Our guys get to play two really high-quality uh, you know, opponents early in the season. And uh, then you kind of evaluate where you're at and, uh, you know, kind of put the pieces in the right puzzle and give them opportunities to play, uh, you know, some more good teams in the future. Pat, uh, thanks for your time. Good luck the rest of the night. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anna Larry, head coach of the White Center Trojans. They trail Holy Family 1-0 after one period in the third place game here at Turkey Trot. We're back with more live coverage from the Plymouth Ice Center on CCX in just a moment. We are back at the Plymouth Ice Center. You know, this Turkey Trot Tournament not only attracts family and fans of these teams, but of just hockey fans in general. One of them joins us now, Garrett Strode, the former Osseo High School coach, now coach of the Tampa Bay Juniors in the USPHL. And first of all, welcome back, Garrett. Always good to see you. Yeah, I know. It's great to always come to this tournament. And uh, you guys do a great job putting it on and uh, just kind of seeing some quality teams. You've been in the uh, head coach of this Tampa Bay team for the last six years. Tell me a little bit about your team and about the league. Yeah, USPHL is a tier three junior league. It's one of the top junior leagues uh, in the U.S. We, uh, our, our, our league sends many, many players on the NCAA colleges, mainly Division three. Uh, I've been down in the Tampa area now about six years, and uh, it's just the quality of the league and just the overall play, it, it was what keep me down there. It's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, 
can't beat uh, coaching down in Florida. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you enjoy the weather. What's the, what's the season like as far as when you start and, and how many games you play? Yeah, so we usually start right, right at the very end of August, and uh, we'll play a 44-game schedule. It's kind of nice for our players. Uh, we get a week off at Thanksgiving. That's why I can make it come back here a little bit and watch. We'll get a couple weeks off at uh, Christmas, so it's not like every single week in a total grind. Uh, but it's a good 44-game schedule, and uh, you know we get players from all over the world uh, actually, because we're uh, can have un unlimited uh, imports. So we get a lot of guys from Czech Republic and Finland and Sweden. You get a handful of kids from Minnesota year to year, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, this is kind of our main uh, recruiting area. Uh, we uh, had like eight Minnesota guys last year. We got three this year, but every year we've had anywhere from three to eight Minnesota guys every year have been down there, and uh, we want to continue that. You know, you still have strong Osseo roots. You got a chance to go back to the arena and see their new locker rooms and refurbishment of that arena, right? Yeah, no, they did a nice job. Uh, Kevin, Willie, Mark Fino do a great job over there and just kind of keeping the tradition going and they've done a lot of improvements at the rink that makes it really nice and uh, a lot of stuff to the lobby and uh, just uh, a lot of credit to those guys for keeping things going at Osseo. I know there's a lot of family pride in the Stroop family. Your younger brother got a chance to be part of the U.S. Women's Olympic Hockey Team coaching staff that won gold last winter. Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun to watch that, to watch them win that gold medal. I mean, uh, they trained at our rink down in Florida, so I saw them for, you know, eight months leading up to the Olympics and the time and effort they put into it. I know my brother had a blast with it, and uh, it, was, it was quite an accomplishment. All right, finally, what's the next for your team when you get back into action? Yeah, so now it's week, week off. We're, it's amazing. Uh, our guys have already played 25 games. We've played a whole high school season, you know, before the high school season even gets going. But now we'll get back into our second half here and uh, kind of build our way up toward the playoffs. Right, Garrett, good to see you, and happy holidays, and enjoy that Florida weather when you get back to Tampa Bay. Thanks, John. I will. Garrett Strode, former Osseo High School coach, now coaching the Tampa Bay Juniors. We'll take a break. Dan and Jay will be back with first period highlights. And then the second period of play, Holy Family White Center Hockey continues on CCX after this. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods yelled fetch and by the time i bought the ball back he was gone yeah i was pissed but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger i learned coping skills like taking it to the hole boom now i'm ready to fetch again but how about i throw and you run and get it Marie, you have pre-diabetes pre-diabetes i don't have time to eat right or exercise i'm a busy mom Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Whew. Action! Welcome back to the Turkey Trot Tournament here, hosted by the Wyzetta Trojans at Plymouth Ice Center. Holy Family leading Wyzetta 1-0 after one in our third place game as we check out some highlights from that opening period of play. And it was a pretty good, pretty good period for Holy Family. Getting another look at a couple. Here's an opportunity up front. And Emmy shot going just wide of the mark there off the setup from Cole Wilson. And then Spinner coming to the front. Stopped there by Fraga. There's a good hard shot by the defenseman Dan Redden for Holy Family. Fraga was a fairly busy man in that first period. And then a two on one. This was the delayed penalty coming in. A, such a near miss right here. Just banged by Mark Lund off the pipe from point blank range. It did ultimately result in a penalty. And there's another penalty. That one was taken by Lutke and it 
led to the only goal of the first period as it's put out front. First of all, the stop here by Fraga. He makes a great save, but ultimately they were able to cash in. Great pass here by Fetchko across, and then just a good hand eye coordination there. Shugel feeding it to his stick and then buries it from close range. You see the shots heavily favoring Holy Family. And uh, again, Wyzetta, as uh, Coach O'Leary talked about with John, can't afford to take those three penalties in the opening period. We will take another quick timeout, and then we'll come back and drop the puck for period number two here. The third place game, and that will be followed up later on by Maple Grove and Edina for the championship. They gave me Vicodin after my knee surgery. They kept prescribing it, so I kept taking it. I didn't know it would be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Holy Family taking the ice again here as they loosen up for period number two. And Wyzetta making their entrance there at the other end of the ice. So certainly uh, for Wyzetta, Dan, trying to get something going offensively, staying out of the box was probably a little topic of conversation. I think you could certainly argue that one of those penalties was kind of tried to cover up for another mistake and take away a good scoring chance. So you can't really fault that one, but uh, particularly the trip, I think, was one that they, you know, he, he saw an opportunity, he thought, to go in and make a check, but once you realize you don't have the angle, you gotta, gotta, let it gotta go. yeah, you just gotta let it go. And, and for safety reasons, for both yourself and your opponent on that play, too, that one could have been pretty dangerous. They gotta get it more aggressive in the attack zone. They really have got a little splintered. They're not putting things together. I think a little dump and chase right now put pressure on that defense of, of Holy Family and wear them down a little bit between Redden and Jurchenko. they got to wear them down and then toward work toward the middle. Get some shots from the outside, work for the rebound, and start wearing them down a little bit, and that'll give them some more opportunities. Defensively, tighten up. Flame or, or the fire right smack in the middle and working in the slot, and they got to clear that out defensively. If they start doing that, they'll get in some better opportunities and um, get that shot total up a little bit, too. Matthews out to take this face off against Pinanemi for Holy Family. Chopped in on net. Fraga knocks it aside. Matthews on the move here, looking for the return pass. Matthews then dropped it back. It was knocked away by Spinner. Matthews, I think, needed to be looking more at the net on that one. A little too unselfish. Here's a shot. Fraga to save, big rebound, and then it's knocked to the corner. Spinner keeping it in, and Matthews knocks it away, and the Trojans looking to counter. Fairchild. Fairchild firing, and Huber had to go off his catching glove and then fall into his pads for a split second. He wasn't sure where it was. Now look Boy. at this opportunity. Really nice setup there. Looked like he was going to set the pass, took the shot. Fraga giving up that big rebound. And there we go again. Deep, clear out the middle. Don't let a guy come down the slot like that to grab at that rebound. And why is that a shoot? Mulrennan turning, firing that one, but Thank it you. is blocked. Fighting his way out of there, Jacob McPyrlin with it. Offside, though. It's 
Spencer Lewin took a step inside a little bit too quickly there. Got the offside. Yeah, you can see why he's out of charging in the zone here early in the period. Really going, but like you said, Jay, not shooting the puck when they got an opportunity. Don't worry about the pass right now. Get pucks on net and go for the rebounds. Yeah, they had a really nice rush going, and Matthews, I think, you know, was looking to create a perfect goal rather than attacking with what he had. Mm -hmm. They get a faceoff here in the offensive zone as Matthews throws that one on net and gloved there by Huber. So Izetta will try and capitalize. Matthews, a guy that Coach O'Leary said, you know, he, he's been on our varsity, but his role is definitely going to expand this year up on the first line now. He'd been, you know, it, on a, a third line type player the last uh, year or two. So, and that's to be expected. High school hockey, you know, sure. as, as the, your uh, older guys graduate, you. You move up the, the ranks a little bit if you're doing the right things. Well, he's a captain, too, so they're looking at him to be a leader. Good four check there. They forced a turnover, but Shugo intercepted that pass out front. McPartland. Big check thrown there, but Wyzetta. Able to get it going the other way now. Matthews with it on the right side. Chopped away from him though. And a race for it here. Bergsland will get there first for Wyzetta. Floating it ahead to Monet. Now Matthews dropping it back. They looked out front for Monet. Deflected away though and cleared back to center. Bergsland up with it. He'll relay it in and then take a little check for his efforts. Battle for it in front of the at a bench there. Jack Siemens controlled it. Now Siemens coming out of there with it. Knocked away from him. He got it back. And here's Mulrennan oh. with a shot. Oh, and it deflects just wide. As Wyzetta able to force a turnover in close there and nearly capitalized. Spinner. You can see Wyzetta. I think they were yeah. talked to a little bit about, you know, we need more effort on the forecheck. And, and you know, go hard after things that don't, you know fault. Well, we won't fault you for extra effort. You got to you know, want to make the right play, but you also we just need to see you really getting after it. And chipped down the rink here by Holy Family. So Wyzetta, I think, got to be happy with that shift. And in fact, Pat O'Leary was clapping when his guys came to the bench. Yeah, absolutely. Look at him. Mean, nice play right here, keeping the forecheck going, keeping the puck down low, putting pressure. And look at the shot here. Nice play by Huber there coming out and cutting on the angle, but that was a good opportunity. You wear their D down, you wear their D down, you keep pushing on him, especially deep down low. Burslin made a good play there. He knew he didn't have a shot, but he just put it down deep. Let's go back and keep forechecking. That's the way Boisette is going to get back into this thing. And the more quantity you can get, you know, ultimately one of those might go in. They don't have to be tic-tac-toe passing plays, and probably really in the reality is most goals aren't going to be that no. way. Battle for it in the corner. And they're really battling. Now the whistle sounds as a Holy Family player was down on the puck. Yeah, Redden, one of their top D, and he's down there and he's physically getting kind of worked on a little. Grant Limke, one of those sophomores getting Nice time there for the fire. 13.50 to go in period two of the third place game. Holy Family leading 1-0. They scored the only goal of the opening period. Wyzetta has come out with a stronger start to period two, though. Kinanimi carrying it to the center, and that shot blocked off the glass. Matthews getting it around to Bergsland. Bergsland banking it out to center where Redden gloves and drops and sends it right back in. Fraga leaving it for Bergsland. Tip free at center. Now Matthews back to gather it for Wyzetta. Yeah, there's a nice play by Cole Wilson up here in neutral ice and one-on-one -on -one battle. He won that puck and took it right back around where was that had an opportunity to take it back into the zone. Wilson's impressed me. He's played a very quiet, solid, smart game tonight for the fire. Face-off coming up here in the Wyzetta zone. And 
nice faceoff win there by Shugo. And he was knocked down. The puck hit him in the circle. Shugo trying to win it back here. And they are able to force a turnover. That one thrown toward the net, but blocked. Siemens getting it out to center, but picked off there and sent right back in by Parker Ganas. Pass ahead for Mulrennan, but Ooh. just missed on the angle off the boards there, and then thrown into the zone by Carson Peters. That was a great relief play by Wyzetta to fly that far wing high. It just relieved the pressure and got them out of the zone. Shot attempt there, deflected. You're seeing a Holy Family is having to work more to get the puck out in this period. Wyzetta's done a better job of pinching off some of these breakouts. Yeah, they've done a really nice. They started out real moving out real smooth and all of a sudden it ain't happening anymore. Yeah you can see definitely Jay like you said there was some talking going on in the ways that a locker room in between some strategy got changed too. They control the draw here. Brian was looking for an opportunity there to work that puck around the defenseman but couldn't get it done. It's Back out to center here where it's controlled by Kyle Mortensen. They throw it up the left side here. Davison had it squirt away from him. And now Holy Family looking to break it out. That one was interrupted at the blue line as well by Wagi. Chipped into the Trojan zone. Here's a shot attempt going wide from Mark Lund. Long rebound now Davison back the other way two on three at the moment and a follow up and the backhander from Schneider went all the way through. Now pass out front oh and a pad save there as Huber lost sight of the puck for a moment and he just kind of had that leg pad where it should be and the puck hit it. Deflected in. Holy family caught back on their heels a lot more here in this second period. Give Wyzetta some credit for making that happen too, but they're all of a sudden a team that looks a little slower. This one what? offside, I guess. Wyzetta all. Here's a look at this opportunity. Watch this puck sneak out front. It deflects and then a little flick at it. Three opportunities there. Wow. Huber got that leg pad out just in time. Held his ground really nice though. Didn't flinch. Coach Ryan had a lot of nice things to say about him. After seeing him last night, he really held the fort down considering he got shelled last night. And I got the impression that he wasn't worried about, you know, Huber's confidence or anything after no. the loss. That's another part of being experienced. I mean, obviously, it hurts when you're a goalie anytime the puck winds up in your net, but. The ability to shake that off and even though high school kids never like to acknowledge how good their opponent is when it's against the Dina you kind of know that you know some pretty good players were putting shots at me too. Well I had to do is look at the paper Jay and he shut him out two out of three periods. That one hitting the official there now a high bounce Trojans able to free it up again they have really worked the forecheck a lot better here in the second period. Back out now to Bergslund. Bergslund shooting. Ooh. Pat Saver delayed penalty coming up. And now we'll be whistled down as we'll get our first penalty against Holy Family. It's going to be an interference call. And that's the type of penalty you start to see when a team's bottled up in their own zone. Well, now we'll see what the Trojans can bring forth. 23% power play effectiveness last year with Holy Family. 79% also in a penalty kill last year, but again, it's a whole new year. Ooh, that's a big loss. That's Cherochenko that went into the box for the fire. Oh my gosh. That's one of their better defensemen. So, why is that getting its first power play chance here? Birdsland out high. That shot attempt blocked. Matthews coming up with it. Heavy check thrown there, but then the puck lifted on out. Fraga will stop it. He misses Mulrennan. And maybe he was attempting to get to Monet there. Matthews yeah, able to push it in deep. 
Joel Matthews back out. Mo Rennett. Here's Bergslund. Mo Rennett cutting in, shooting. Big rebound, but Holy Family gets there first. And now lugged out of there shorthanded by Shugel. Shugel runs into a check, though. Might have been better off getting that puck wider or at least dumping it to the corner. Spinner, nice play there as they tried to turn the corner around him. Then it gets uh -oh. through Bergsland. Here's a shorthanded breakaway chance, or a two on one actually as it develops. Drop pass back and behind Shugel. And the fire missed out on an opportunity there. Fight for it in the corner, but keep in mind this is eating up Wyzetta's power play time. Now Mulrennan up the right wing here for the Trojans. They try to make a move around the D and they take it away. But Kinanemi there got a little too confident with the puck. I think he could have had a chance to clear and didn't take it. Back out, Bergsland around to Mulrennan. Bergsland looking toward the corner, but that one rule off target for Ludke. And then Mulrennan miss hits it. Wyzetta not looking real sharp on this first power play. There's a pad save, kick to the corner by Huber. They get it back, Charchenko is out of the box. Penalty is over, but Wyzetta still set up in the offensive zone. Ooh, thrown out front there. Puck thrown around back the other way and hustling in after it was Schneider. Wyzetta still set up in the offensive zone here even though this penalty is expired. And put to the front, Huber the stop and then things get rough. And Luke Roloffs was not happy that they were coming near his goalie there and threw a couple shots in. See if any penalties will come out of this. It doesn't appear so initially, but. Well, Jay, that last Georgian line, the boy, the Wyzetta boys put their big boy pants on. They were take, they were winning every one in one battle. They were out physicaling totally the fire here. They were not they were not getting moved off the puck whatsoever. You can see they're just barreling into the crease there. And it was going all over the place. The Trojans are energized right now. Shot attempt there from Peters was blocked. And now here comes Holy Family. Uh -oh. Nice pass ahead. Opportunity here on the breakaway chance. Oh, and he lost it. McFarland had it slip away a little bit. There is a delayed penalty coming up, though, against Wyzetta. So that rush didn't result in a goal, but it does result in a hooking penalty. And Holy Family will go on the power play. McPartland again, another one of the sophomores that are getting experience here. See the beautiful pass, and he's yeah. in alone. And yeah, Mortensen got the hook in just as he was shooting that puck. So Mortensen will go for hooking at 9.42. Holy family back to the power play. The only goal was a power play goal for them. Now Redden. Penanimi with it. There's a shot. Fraga kicks it to the corner. Trojans get there first and sent down the rink by Joe Tomzik. Now Spinner will start this power play rush for Holy Family. Penanimi. Redden dropping it down to the corner. Go cross ice with it and back out top. Redden keeps it moving. And there's a shot that deflects off the glass. Battle for it down the corner. Matthews trying to dig it out. And then the pass back to the point gets through and Redden has to cover up. Redden lugging it and he'll throw it on in, relays it around. Shugel keeps possession there, then down to the corner. They throw it out front and a close range, close range attempt there was thwarted. Matthews back up with it. Trying to go long there for Siemens. Huber sending it ahead and here comes Wilson. 
Dropping it back. Pinanemi with it. Leaving it for Wilson. Back for Pinanemi. Trying to look out front, but it was jabbed away from him. Under 20 to go in the power play now for Holy Family. Haven't really been able to get much set up. This period has looked uh, much tougher for them to get anything going than in, the, than in that first. It's been kind of a role reversal. Wyzetta's definitely had the better of things here in period two, and now they force a turnover. Siemens, yeah, and directed to the corner. Penalty time is over now, so a good kill for Wyzetta. There's a good chance there for the fire to get back some momentum there, and uh, well, they really got nothing really going on that power play at all, Jay. And now Wyzetta can grab it right back again and go for it. You know, it's, it's time now for the fire. They got to grab this back, and they need to go through Redden, and they needed to go through you know, Pin and Emi on this one. He's not taking enough shots. He's a little too unselfish with the puck, if you notice. He needs to force some issues in front and get himself some clear shots. He is their leading scorer by a long shot uh, from last year, and uh, it, it's time now maybe for him to step up to, to win this game. I know it's early, but it's time to take some leadership role to show these kids, I think, maybe. Nice breakout here, but then before they could really get a shot attempt, one knocked down. Long bank pass ahead, and it's going to come right to Huber, and he will cover that one up as uh, he had a defenseman there to protect him, Charchenko, who is a big guy, but uh, he still didn't want to take any chances as a uh, Trojan was coming bearing down hard. Yeah, Charchenko has really stood out tonight. So is Redden for, for the fire. Nas has also, too. He's been one of their sophomore Ds. He's got most of the ice time for the sophomores. On uh, the defensive end of things, he's looked pretty good. Put out front. Here's a Ooh. shot and a blocker save there as Tomzik came in from the point to take that shot. Yeah, you're starting to see some cracks here. You see where that puck was let go? Right there, right in the middle, right in the crease. And that was that, that's a dangerous spot. As those are mental mistakes that Coach Ron was talking to me about in the beginning. He said that was the problem in the, in the second period against the Dynamo. These little things that, you know, good teams will jump on and make you pay for. Yeah, and Redden had that one wind up in his breezers there. And yeah. had a little help from the opponent to locate the puck. Wyzetta now has a one-shot edge. Overall for the game after they're out shot 13 to 3 in the first. Ooh, and Matthews ripping one just over the crossbar. 4-10 to go here in the second period. Holy Family still leading 1-0. They had the better of the first by far. Wyzetta has definitely had the better of the second, but have been unable to tally so far. Flipped in around the defenseman by Fetchko. It's off a skate. Trojans unable to clear there. Pinanemi coming up with it. He took a check. Now Bergsland away with it for the Trojans. He will float it right up the middle. It's going to come in on net. And puck frozen there. Tarchenko, he got a penalty earlier, so he didn't want to come back too hard at the Wyzetta guy, but he's, he's saying to the referee, well, now you're going to let him come at me. But if I retaliate, it's going to be a penalty. What? You know, that. Well, I, there's a little method to that madness, don't you think? I think the way that event said, well, if you get a little opportunity to nudge him, uh, give him a little edge. It's the yeah, age old battle in front of the net. Yep. Has a lot of things in hockey have changed. That really hasn't over the years. This is my space. No, it's mine. Back and forth. This be the slot. This is where the war will occur. Thrown back in deep here by Holy Family. And now the Trojans able to break it out with Kimlinger. Bounced in behind where it's stopped by Huber. And pop back to center, Mortensen. And they'll relay it back in. A hard bounce off the end wall there. Charchenko playing it to himself in the corner. Oh. And it comes right up the middle, but nobody there for Wyzetta to take advantage. Nice pass to the left side, and there again, a case where you got to be looking to shoot that puck, McPartland. Bloggy made a nice play there, sliding across and blocking that shot, though. That was nice. Push back into the wide of zone here. Kyle Mortensen back to play it. It was deflected and then still handled by Wagi. Right up the middle come the Trojans there. A puck loss. 
Now a follow up opportunity but shot attempt blocked. 2.15 to go here in the second. Still one nothing Holy Family and they are forced to ice the puck and Noel Ron and his uh, assistants right now kind of have to be thinking what happened to the team that we saw in the first period. Not that they're getting totally dominated or anything but they certainly haven't played as well as they did in the first. There's been some pushback by the Trojans. Now he's looking for that pushback by his, his team to see where they're at again and they're young and uh, they're trying to find their way here. Wyzetta winning the draw here. Bergland tried to go back to the point but it was intercepted and good recovery there by Wyzetta to get back and keep that one from being a good chance the other way but now brought into the offensive zone for the fire. Here's the trailer for an Emmy. Oh and he just missed. On a high stick side and about an inch over the crossbar with that one. Okay, but there, there you go. There's the game plan right there. Get your good guys. If you're coach, coach Ron, tell them, okay, boy, it's time to unleash now. Good opportunity here, and he doesn't hesitate. He was looking to shoot all the way on that one, and he should. Maybe more than an inch high, though, there as I tried to claim initially. That's right. At least he's taking the shots now. He hasn't taken them, and he's had some opportunities. Off the draw, fire win it, thrown to the corner. And a chance back the other way for Luke Fairchild, but that one interrupted nicely by Spinner. And you can see why Coach Ron said, you know, a couple of these experienced D, we feel good about their yep. ice awareness and just their overall skill level, too. Yeah, and Spinner's one of them. Yeah. But Matthews putting on the brakes here. Works his way into the circle, and that one bounces up and out of play. Get a faceoff coming up in the Holy Family zone here with 1.16 to go in period number two. John Jacobson will be joining us again from rinkside here in this second intermission, and he will have the play by play call of the Maple Grove Edina championship game coming up later on this evening. Well, and I think, you know, as we're talking, the contrast you brought it up, this is something that the fire can learn from Wyzetta right now. You know, they're looking awful pretty, awful good. Now they got to learn how to play a little dirty and a little rough here, too. But I haven't seen that too much. Here's a chance now. Pin and Emmy. Bergsland getting back and able to block that shot. Good job to take, take the right angle by Bergsland there as he, yeah. he, he read, you know, got out front of it a little bit rather than trying to catch him immediately. And then a little back check help there as well. So not quite able to convert that one into a great scoring chance. Well, Bergland's our top D. He's been a guy that's been around the longest for him. And Holy Family winning the draw here. We're under a minute to go here in this second period. Ben and Emmy with it. Trying to look out front. Now he keeps possession. Spins back the other way, but then taken by the Trojans. Oh, penalty coming up here against Holy Family. Delayed penalty now as heading to the bench. The goaltender, Prega, but we now get the whistle to sound. And we are going to get a hooking call late in the period against Holy Family. They had been working well on the uh, forecheck behind the net, but then when the puck was taken back, there you see Pinanemi called for the hook. That's something that's, you know, they, they've cracked down on quite a bit, I think, you know, high school hockey, but really all levels oh, yeah. of hockey. They're, they're, years ago, that one probably wouldn't have been deemed, you know, enough of a hook maybe to draw a penalty. But he got in on the hands. Well, that, and that stick stuff they've they've said for the past five six years. They ain't going to deal with that anymore. That's not the way it's going to get played. Bergsland with it. Here's Mulrennan cutting into the circle, firing, and he's trying to go up over the shoulder there of Huber, but he's able to make the glove stop. Interesting how they're using Mulrennan out on that point, Dan. He, he likes to really get a running start and receive a pass up and really you know jump up. He's a, he's a forward playing the point on this D, but I was watching him earlier. He kind yep. of circles around at the blue line to kind of get a, uh, a head start into the play. Well, apparently he can hit that short side high quickly. But oh, there's oh. one off the crossbar by Bergsland. Now back out to Bergsland, puts it out front, looking there for the go. tip. As Monet deflecting that one over the net, a near miss for Wyzetta late in the period. 
Here's time for one more chance. Mulrennan, oops, tried to shoot it and missed it. And then comes up high. Mulrennan might be lucky to not get a penalty late here as he comes head to head with Cole Wilson. And so the period will come to an end. Wyzetta just missing on a scoring chance late in the period. They had a very good period, but still trailing at one nothing. But I think momentum wise they've turned it totally around they just haven't found the back of the net yet but they've turned this into a totally different game they're playing this is Trojan hockey now they're getting down getting dirty they've turned it into a rougher game and uh, this isn't the kind of game that Holy Family wants to play at all they're back on their heels right now and I'm just feeling it and I think you're feeling it too sooner or later was I was going to break this thing and they're going to score so we've reached the end of period number two in this third place game. We'll be back here to Plymouth Ice Center in just a moment in our continuing coverage of the CCX Turkey Trot Tournament. your will but however loud the loudness gets however many cheese puffs may fly you're the driver the one in control stand firm just wait and move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive never give up till they buckle up Welcome back to Plymouth Ice Center. After two periods of play, Holy Family continues to lead Wyzetta one to nothing. We're joined by fire head coach Noel Ron and Noel. Same scores at the end of the first period, but those periods are certainly a contrast. Yeah, I thought we all played them pretty bad in the first, and then we got all played in the second. I think it was uh, 14 to two in the shots, and we out shot them 13-3. So I guess whoever wins the third is going to win the game. You got a young team this year. I mean, is that part of it? Just kind of the growing pains of opening weekend and then just getting uh, some of these kids used to varsity play? Yeah, it's a great weekend with, you know, there's four solid teams. You know, we're playing a lot of kids. Obviously, we want to see where we're at. And, uh, you know, a lot of kids are trying to earn spots this weekend and they will continually have to work uh, hard to earn spots throughout the year. So uh, it's a great weekend just to kind of see where everybody's at. We have three, four new guys in the lineup tonight. And, uh, you know, we'll evaluate after this weekend as we go forward. I asked Coach O'Leary this after the first period. What's kind of your goal for the weekend? You know, just to kind of gain a little experience from the younger guys. You know, we got a few new guys in our program just to kind of get them uh, acquainted with the systems. And then kind of being, uh, you know, we got new leaders. We got new seniors, new juniors, new captains. So just to kind of get the team commodities put together, get some guys working with each other, try new line combinations, and nothing better than an environment like this where we have good crowds uh, and four good hockey clubs. Good luck in the third period in all season. Thank you. No, Ron, head coach of Holy Family. They lead Whites at a one to nothing after two periods for a third place game at the CCX Turkey Trot Tournament. We'll be back and more of our second intermission coming up live here from Plymouth after this. I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. I try to keep up with what these young people is is doing and knowing. I was at work and I was I just got a text from a number that I didn't know. I sent him a text. He texts me back and say, "Who this?" <laughs> and I just thought that was the funniest thing. The next few weeks, you just made fun of me. Like would answer the door and say, "Who this?" Who this? Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. 
Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, America let's, let's do lunch. lunch. We're back at the Plymouth Ice Center and joined now by Josh Harding. He's an assistant coach for the Edina Hornets, one of a number of great assistant coaches that they've got on Kurt Giles' staff. And most Minnesota hockey fans will know him as a longtime goaltender with the Minnesota Wild. And first of all, thanks for joining us. And tell us about coaching in high school hockey, third year now with the Edina program. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a great way to give back. And uh, when Kurt uh, came to me a couple years ago, uh, you know, I thought it was a good way to give back to the you know, to the hockey community, and I'm uh, living in Edina with my wife and kids now. So, uh, you know, it just made sense and uh, to stay in the game and uh, try to pass along what I know about the game. Most people know your career was cut short by MS. How is your health now? It's good. It's uh, you know, it definitely a lot better now that I'm not pushing myself uh, to the to the spots that I was when I was playing. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier telling the other kids to skate instead of doing it yourself. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's been very good and uh, hopefully it keeps getting better. How involved or how much do you follow the Wild still? Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I watch, uh, you know, watch all their games. Uh, you know, I, I, I wish them the best. Uh, you know, still, uh, still cheer for them. Uh, ho hopefully they, uh, they can bring a title here. Tell me about your duties as, as coaching and what, what are you just working with the varsity or JV or what, what ages do you work with? I'm working with the varsity and uh, uh, working with the goalies and uh, the defensemen, so it uh, it's been a great transition. Uh, learning a lot about coaching, and and uh, you know just uh, we got a great coaching staff, and starts with Kurt, and it's been uh, it's been a hell of a uh, it's been pretty fun. How much did past coaches that you had, either professionally or you know when you were young, or even here at the high school, helped you translate some of those thoughts to, to kids that you're coaching now? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's huge. I've had such good coaches uh, coach me with, you know, go back to Jacques Lemaire and, uh, you know, all the way up to Mike Yo. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot from them and, uh, you know, try to teach these kids, uh, you know, more importantly to have fun and uh, to enjoy their time too because uh, it turns into a job pretty quick and uh, this, is, uh, th this is years that they'll always remember. So. You said you have uh, children. Are they hockey players? Uh, they're they're a little young. I got an 11 year old. That is uh, the five and the two. Uh, you know, my daughter, she's into gymnastics and dancing, and the the two year old we'll see. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully he gets into it. Finally, uh, I know you only had one game so far, but what do you like about the Cedina team, the varsity team for this year? Uh, you know, I think that we, uh, I think we're a good team. Uh, you know, uh, the depth is good. Uh, the guys get along great. They're, we got no selfish players, which is huge. Uh, pass the puck. Uh, you know, we're we're a fast team when we do that. So, uh, you know, it'll be a good test tonight, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Thanks for your time, and uh, good luck this season with Edina. Hey, thanks a lot. Josh Harding, assistant coach for Edina. They will be in the championship game tonight against Maple Grove at about 7.15, a game you'll be able to see live here on CCX. We'll take time out. Dan and Jay back with the second period highlights and more, watching live coverage of the CCX Tricky Trot Tournament live from the Plymouth Ice Center. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Do you hear what I want? This holiday season, give the gift of self-love with a Simonson Salon and Spa gift card. Manicures, pedicures, facials, massages. Delight everyone on your list with Express to Indulgent Spa experiences. A bonus gift is yours with qualifying in-store gift card purchase. Online gift certificates are also available. Visit Simonsons.com for more details. Oh, what fun it is to give at Simonson Salon and Spa. I already knew that I was gonna go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely wanna major in political science. After that, I'm gonna get my law degree. Then I'm gonna come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined, it's, it, it's gonna happen. My name is Justin, and I 
am your dividend. Well, as uh, John and Coach Ron mentioned there, really a tale of two periods as Holy Family dominated the first, Wyzetta dominated the second, but the only goal came in that first period as Holy Family leads 1-0. We'll take a look at some second period highlights and definitely a lot more highlights from the team in white than what we saw in the first as we get started with Holy Family. An opportunity here, a hard wrist shot there. Frag of the stop, and then it's cleared to the corner. But it was uh, overall a Wyzetta period. They're working hard and close, and here's a nice stop coming out to meet it there was Huber as he robs him and then it comes out here's another couple little jabs at it in close makes the pad save and then that pass just a little behind that was a potential two on one short handed and then here's an opportunity on a breakaway by McPartland it did result in a penalty but the shot going wide and then later on in the period why Zeta Morenin coming in almost Put that one over the shoulder, but the Huber able to make the glove catch. You see why Zeta completely flipped the shots around as they trailed 13-3 after one period. And you see the Trojans have taken four penalties and just a couple taken by Holy Family. However, they will have another minute 30 of penalty time as we head to the third. We'll step aside, come back and drop the puck. We'll see who's going to win the third place game. And then later on, it is Edina and Maple Grove for the title. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A memorable run, 2016 state champion Wyzetta Trojans, and they uh, certainly have had some good success in recent years, but when you break through and, and get that championship, obviously they're first in hockey, that was uh, quite a big deal. And this Holy Family team has been in a couple section finals, yeah. quite an old run. We were talking to just a, a heartbreaking loss to Minnetonka. They almost had a section title, which would have been their first in school history for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously Maple Grove, they've had just a couple appearances, and then Edina is in kind of a whole nother league. I mean, they're, they got banners galore over at uh, Braemar, but. Uh, they're kind of the standard over there, by gosh. No, this, but that, you know what, that shows the quality of this tournament, though. I mean, these are elite teams that are in this tournament, and, and to get them right off the bat at the beginning of the season, boy, it's. It's really fun. This is good hockey to watch. There's no slouching around here. These teams really go after each other. So it's really fun to watch. It's good for the kids, too. They get it right off the bat, boy. And they've settled in, as I said, with this group of four that have been yep. consistently competitive, too. I kind of like that little bit of loyalty to the tournament, both from the visiting teams, but also from Wyzetta. If one yeah. team has a little bit of a down year, Pat's not saying, well, we don't want you back. You're not high quality, or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're all four have seen it as a good fit for their programs. I think the ice a little sticky here early in the period there and they were hesitant to make that pass as the puck was sticking on Berglund. Now opportunity here to the front. Oh, and the pass comes back in. Try oh. Huber with a stop. 
Wyzetta taking advantage of this power play here to start this third period all over the place. Got a great chance early. Bergslund firing off the tip of the glove there, it looked like. And clear down by the fire. Huber didn't have much time to settle in before the assault began there, and he was able to keep it out. Well, you know, looking at Wyzetta's roster, they lost either top 11 scores, and it's, it's showing. Matthew's shot was blocked, and then Huber got spun around a little bit. Back out to Bergslund. Looking high here, and they'll give it to Matthews at the top of the circle, playing it down low. Here's a try to sneak it in short side by Fairchild. Now Morenin back across to Bergslund. Down low with it is Matthews. Five to go in the power play, but Wyzetta set the tone early in this third. And Huber, a blocker save. The penalty time is now over. Holy Family has killed it off, but barely. Well, there were some definitely good opportunities there, especially right off the get-go. They had a mad rush there. And some, about three opportunities with it, pretty much an open net. And Huber kept it out, though. I'd like to thank our telecast sponsors, Malmberg's Garden Center and Nursery and Simonson Salon and Day Spa. Thanks for joining us on this holiday weekend turkey trot tournament here on CCX. Dumped on in. Fraga stopping it. But then his pass is too far, and it's going to result in icing. He got that fresh new ice and <laughs> had a lot of uh, a lot of room to go. And down the rink it went, so not too often you see an icing on the goaltender, but happened right there. We'll get a face-off in the Wyzetta zone. Slide's kind of good there. Well, it's a break for Holy Family here now. They got to start resettle themselves and start getting on the basics here. Pass flutters across. It came out of the zone, so they have to tag up here. That'll allow Wyzetta an opportunity to break it out. Michael North carrying the puck here for the Trojans. And they're just able to keep it in, but some room to work with back to get it there for Redden. Rink-wide pass bounced away, and North got it back to the line and then sent back into Wyzetta's zone here. Early in the third period of this third place game here in the Turkey Trot Tournament, Holy Family in black, Wyzetta in white, and Holy Family leading 1-0. And there's a shot on net and the stop by Huber as it went off his stick and then kind of settled in to his midsection there. He holds on with 14.24 to go in the third. A lot of whistles so far. They get, you know, found the five hole a little bit there, but you know, it's playing to Wyzetta right now. Somebody's got to find the rhythm again. Bergslund leaving it to Mulrenna. Now back to Bergslund. His shot hit a teammate out front. And that leads to a rush back the other way led by Spinner. Spinner shooting. Blocker save there by Fraga. Now to the corner it goes. Bergslund will get there first. Takes a bump. Back out to the top, and that one deflecting up and over the crossbar. Long pass was tipped, but still received ultimately by Mo Renan. Go to drag it back and get a shooting angle there, but missed the net. And then this pass blocked by Shugo, and he'll lead the rush back the other way. Two on two. Shugo. Oh, oh nice check. Bergslund with a great job there. Pope checked it, and then, for good measure, took the body as well. That's uh, about as good as it gets defensively. Now Mulrennan will lift it in, and they'll complete a change. I think you kind of find out in the third period of back-to-back -back games, too, you know, just how in shape you, the guys are as well. Obviously, they've been skating a fair amount and skating in the fall and all of that, but you still might be some uh, burning legs and burning lungs a little bit here this third period. Well, this is uh, this ain't practice, Jay. This is a game, and uh, yeah, you're going to find out who's tired, who ain't. Sliding block there by Redden, and then the puck caught up in his equipment. That's stuck him a little bit. 
I think the, uh, the, the non-whistle there led me to believe, though, that they thought Redden was just laying on the puck on purpose. Yep. I think if it was, if they thought he was hurt or it was uh, really caught in his glove or something, they would have blown it dead. But they were, they were not going to allow him the opportunity to just lay on the puck. Yeah, he kind of took that one full force, but it was so close. I don't think the ref got a good look at how hard it hit him. And uh, you take one in the stomach like that. There's padding there, but it still hurts. Uh, he's still trying to get his wind back. Let's hope he's not hurt too bad. They need him badly. And then putting it out front. Here's a shot on the stop, and then it just trickled wide of Fraga as it went all the way through to the other side of the net. Pass out front, and then that one knocked away. Spinner's pass knocked down, then it again. And now thrown it to Davis and up the left side here, but back to get it instead as Roloff. His pass intercepted at center. Trojans looking to quickly counter. Solid check thrown by Roloff there. Spinner relaying it around. The pace is picked up a little bit here. Teams going back and forth a little bit more than what we'd seen. Now Pinanimi up with it, trying to get it out front as Fechter was alone for a moment. Pace is picked up, but the space has gotten a lot shorter, I'll tell you. There's some hitting going on. Wyzetta able to come up with the loose puck here. Plugged by Brian. They're changing behind him. He got it in deep. Tarchenko with it. Oh, and he takes a solid open ice hit. Jack Kimmler lining him up. Tarchenko is a very big defenseman, but boy, he ran into a wall right there. He got taken right off his feet. A beautiful check. No targeting here. Just boom. Both guys just that's a that's a classic hockey check right there. Yeah, the, the, the time and space here, Jay, has just been really limited. They're playing close, close checking game. There is there is flow. I mean, there's good pace and good movement, but it's it's a tight checking game here now. Way different than the first period. This game has completely changed its dynamic. And this is suited more toward, I think, Wyzetta's style of game. They're more suited to playing this. They, they, they're just having trouble putting a puck in there. That, that, they can't score right now. Yeah, that's the thing that hurts a little bit if you're Wyzetta is that you played really a quite strong second period, but nothing to show yeah, for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that'll get in your head real fast, too. Huber stopping it. And at this point, as a coach, what you tell your kids is you just start throwing rubber at the net. Whenever you get an opening, throw rubber, throw rubber, throw rubber. And Huber, I mean, he made some decent saves for sure, but it wasn't, I don't, I wouldn't really consider it a case of the opposing goalie standing on his head. They no. didn't get a lot of real great chances. Oh. Trojans looking to break it out deep up the middle here and onto the stick of Nick Gardner, and down he goes. Some mild grumbling looking for a penalty there, but uh, ruled to be a clean defensive play there by Ganas, and we'll just get a face off in the Holy Family zone. No, Ganas made a nice play there. He was, there was no hooking there, just got tied up in his clothes. He took him down just like he should, and good play. Oh, he's just got to get some dirty. They got to get somebody in front of Uber. They got to make get his eyes off the puck so he can't see what's going on. And most importantly, they got to get a rebound here. That shot never made it to the net. And then dumped down the rink. This is going to be icing against Holy Family here. So kind of an unforced one there. Those are the type that you hate to take. It can come back and bite you. Yep. Moisette has always been good about loading up their point and getting some shots outside and getting their forwards in front of the net. This is, might be the formula. They're going to need to break the ice and get that first goal. Tip to center, and then that clear and try a whiffed on. Now they get it back into Wyzetta's zone. Bergslund back to get it. Bergslund will log a lot of ice time this year. A solid oh. returning defenseman. Nice move by Mulrenna, a three on two developing. Mulrenna, oops, that one got a little disjointed. Siemens getting it back to Mulrenna. Mulrenna 
controlling here. Keeps possession, then dropping it off. And the shot attempt there from Tomzik was blocked. And then lifted out high, a rolling puck. Those can be dangerous, but stopped. And sent to center and tipped on in by Siemens. Holy Family coming back the other way with Fetchko. Under nine minutes to play here, still 1-0 Holy Family, our score. These teams met in the third place game a year ago as well with Holy Family winning. Pass onto the tape of Bergslund, the defenseman jumping up into the play and tipped just wide of the mark there by Monet. That one's off a skate and going to be covered by Huber. Holy Family, I think, has done a, a better job in this third period, Dan. Uh, you know, they're, they're not getting a lot of offense himself either, but they're also doing some things to keep Wyzetta from really dominating play as much as they did in the second. Well, most importantly, they're not letting pucks in front of their net. Nothing's getting clean to Huber at all. It's like you said, he's not standing on his head. He's not making any really tough saves. He's just doing what he has to. They're playing good defensive hockey, and I think Coach Ron would be really pleased with that right now. Matthews trying to drag it through, then a shot, stick save, Huber. Matthews pass back out to the point, and that shot deflected wide from Wagi. Lifted to center, Wagi trying to get a pass, fetch go. He'll come up with it though. Out front, and they couldn't quite get a shot attempt away. Trojans off the wall with it, and now Matthews leading a four on three. Pass deflected, Matthews then dropping it back, but nobody home. Oh, heavy hit going on there as Trachenko knocked uh, Monet down. Now out front, tip to the line, but not out. Benanime up with it. Wyzetta trying to hurry up and change, and he's going to throw it all the way down the ice. They needed a change pretty bad there, and so it just iced the puck. Here's a look at this check. Charchenko. Mm. That was close. That could have been a penalty. Yeah, that was really close, right on the line there. And I had the feeling after he took that hit out front, somebody was going to pay later on. Yeah. Got to be careful there, man. Got to be careful. Right now, you don't need to take a penalty like that. And Holy Family's going to take a timeout. They looked a little tired yeah. in the ice, the puck on that last one. And, and so they'll use a timeout. 7.23 to go here in the third period. And again, Holy Family getting the goal. Shugel in the first period on a power play late in the period. And that's the only, only scoring of the game right now. I think they had a couple good opportunities after that. But pretty much, they've been shut down. Uh, boys, that has strengthened up the defense. They got more physical with the fire, and it's really pulled them back a little bit now. And uh, uh, but, like you said, I think the the fire have gotten tight, tightened up defensively in their own zone, and uh, really haven't given them too many looks, especially with second opportunities. So, uh, especially in this period when they needed to shut them down. So, uh, so I think some good things have gotten accomplished for the fire here tonight with that that happening in this period. A couple of young Wyzetta fans mixing it up in the crowd a little bit there. <laughs> Getting ready to play Trojan hockey. Oh, yeah. Did I say that? I didn't say that. <laughs> Reminder to watch for Maple Grove and Edina for the championship coming up. If you're watching us live here on Saturday night, the 24th, we thank you for joining us and uh, wish you a happy holiday season here from all of us at CCX Sports. And Obviously, it's a great weekend for us to get started with the boys' hockey, but, uh, boy, there's an awful lot of boys' and girls' hockey and boys' and bro girls' basketball coming up wow. over the next three months. Uh, really looking forward to it as we jump into the winter season full force here. So uh, be sure to join us uh, on TV and online all season long here for good high school hockey and basketball and more uh, on CCX Media. Carried in here. There is a shot, and Fraga making the stop on Cole Wilson. Frega had to play pretty well in the first period. They did get the one goal, but he made some big saves. Since then, he hasn't really been tested all that much. 
No, but he looks really steady. I like the way he looks. He's uh, knocked down there, but just unable to control it was Monet there for Wyzetta. Kachenko back with it here for the fire. Tip to the Wyzetta line, and then they quickly counter. Fairchild throws it across. Here's a shot. And Huber from stick to glove there made it look easy. I like the way, though, Wyzetta came to that front of that net right away. Any rebound there, Fairchild would have had a fair, fairly good chance of getting a rip at it anyway. They just need to get more bodies on the net. Check thrown there as it's dumped into Wyzetta zone. Mortensen back to play it here for the Trojans, and they're going to wave off icing here. They went right past the Holy Family defenseman there, may have been even touched. Carried up by Roloffs. Roloffs dumping it in behind the net. Not that you're not, well, here's an opportunity. And Frag, I was going to say, if you're Holy Family, not that you're not trying to score, because you are, but if the game just continued this way for another six minutes, they'd be okay with it, because they're the team playing on the lead right now. Oh, yeah. Well, they got a third guy high. Kept in at the point, and a rising shot from Charchenko went over the top. You won't see three guys down below the, the faceoff dots for the fire in the attack zone. Long pass ahead, broken up. Tarchenko read it beautifully there, and he takes a bump. Wyzetta bringing it back left side here with Siemens. Siemens looking out front. Tarchenko just pushed to the side, and he throws a check. Matthews hustles in to get it. They dig for it along the wall, and Matthews is able to win it. He's not a real big guy, but boy, he's feisty and quick. He stepped up in that leadership role we talked about earlier. Uh -oh. Here comes Pinanimi to the net, trying to drag it through, and a stop made by Fraga. That was a pretty important stop right there. That was pretty clutch. Boy, I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> to keep their opportunities alive, he had to make this save. And Pinanimi looked like he wanted to drag it in his forehand, but then he kind of shoveled it. Those can be tough to read, and you get a goalie sliding side to side, he might open up the five hole there, but it yeah. didn't happen. Yeah, why is that a D was good there, though? He kept him that one side, made a very restricted move. Banked off the boards and out to center. Thrown back, but intercepted by Bergsland here for Wyzetta. Matthews hustling in, throwing a check. Rolls along the dasher there, then Matthews tried to get it out front, but it was intercepted. The fire coming back the other way. Chipped in, Redden thought better of giving chase there, the defenseman. Now Monet carrying for Wyzetta. His shot blocked by Redden. Long rebound then jabbed aside by the goalie Huber. And then they iced the puck though. Oh, wait a minute. Coming out to play it instead was uh, Fraga. I think he thought he was going to be able to catch him in a line change there. Tip free. The puck lays there right in the circle and then jab to the corner. Under four minutes now to play in this third place game. Holy Family still leading Wyzetta one zip. Davison trying to get around the D there. Charchenko then took it. Davison hustles in to try and win it back here. And nice job by Breon to get there. Pass comes out front. Turnaround try there, and Huber making a stop on Schneider, and then things get a little physical alongside. Boy, Huber just will not give up a rebound. He is not going to let anything hit the ice once it gets on him, period. And it's really saved the day a number of times here for him. Maple Grove beating Holy Family 5-2 in the junior varsity third place game on the other rink. Partland sending it on in deep here. 
stop by Fraga, but then he tried to ring it around the boards and instead hit McPartland with it. Back out to the point, it escapes. And now Wyzetta getting a rush out of it. Uh oh, opportunity here. There's a save, rebound oh. by Lewis, and it just hits the pipe. There was an open net briefly, and that puck settled in alongside Huber and I believe got all the way to the goalpost. I think Spencer Lewin got back there and he got it. He kicked it out because it was behind Huber there. The original shot was by Nick Gardner, which really handcuffed Huber. And then watch this puck trickle around right there. Yep. Yeah, they just yep. pulled Spencer it off. Spencer Lewin just got a stick in the way there and pushed it out. It was going in the inside corner there. And Redden there Redden. as well. He might yeah. end up digging it out. Yeah. Oh, Wyzetta, that was a near miss. And Nimi carrying it. Centering pass, here's the shot. Oh, and fought off there by Fraga. Here they come again. Pinanimi firing, and he missed the net. Now Trojans get it only to center, though, and relayed right back in by Holy Family. Time starting to be a factor here. Yep. Under 2.20 to go. Why is that a trailing one zip? Charchenko up with it and pass drop back, and they might have a chance to outnumber yeah. him there. Charchenko, maybe not a great time to be pinching in. It was not a good move. Deflected in by Fairchild as Wyzetta finishing a change and trying to come out with fresh bodies to get in on the forecheck, and they do exactly that. Put out front. Oh, and what a great defensive recovery there by Holy Family's Lewin. And now it's McPartland coming back the other way. Boy, that looked like it was going to be a golden scoring opportunity, and Lewin getting back to lift the stick. Lewin's made a couple good plays here and defensively in that zone. 125 to go. We'll keep our eye on Fraga. See if Wyzetta gets an opportunity to pull him for an extra attacker. Bergsland up with it. Get the feeling they'd like to get an offensive zone face off. But barring that, at least get the puck in deep and see if you can't get your goalie out. And that's what's happening now. Fraga yep. heads off. Matthews up with it. Extra attacker now into the fray. Matthews putting it out front there there's the goal. And it was Monet just off yeah. the bench. The guy the that just gave attacker. it. Yep. Beautiful backdoor play. It's Coach O'Leary's favorite setup. He loves the backdoor and he got one. No fault to Uber there. They had it set up beautifully and just outnumbered him down below. The forward did not come down with Monet and left him open down there. Well, now watch the pass cross. I was watching him come off yep. the bench and wondering, you know, if they were going to wait till he was actually fully into the play. And how about that? You come off the bench, you're right there in position, redirect. Yeah. They couldn't have drawn it up any better for exactly. you know, pulling your goaltender. Yep. Yeah, the forward did not come down with him, did not follow him down to cover him. Matthews and North will get the assist on Monet's goal, so a 16-06. With an extra attacker on, Wyzetta able to battle back and tie it up. No, we don't see it happen often, but so every once in a while it happens. By God, that was a beautiful play. And finally, Wyzetta gets that goose egg off the board. You know, we kind of knew going in to be a good game against two fairly evenly matched teams. They're kind of the same situation they're both in. Top three. Back out to the point. Thrown by the net. Oh. Ooh, and that one trickling wide. Isetta trying to get one last opportunity, and that one is blocked. And so 51 minutes not enough to decide this uh, third place game here as 
Wyzetta fighting back to tie it up in the last minute of play and we will go to overtime here in this third place game. I was talking about getting your legs tested and your wind tested. Now how about some extra time right? Yeah why not what the heck. Yeah I tell you what really in, in the kids minds. Yeah you've been practicing and practicing and practice is practice. They really don't like practice. They practice to play the game. Well all right give me some extra time to play the game. They're all right with it. What the heck. You know but you know. We've been watching this game and the pace has been good. This has been a good up down hockey game. They've played well. They've been very competitive both teams. I think both coaches are pretty pleased with what they've seen. They've had to make some adjustments between their lines between the way they were playing and I think both teams have accomplished a lot of what they wanted to see tonight compared to what they saw last night. I think a lot of good things have happened for both teams uh, on that. Holy family tighten up their D. Uh, Boy, is that a slow start again? I don't think Coach Lee was happy with that, but boy, did they pick it up. I mean, and they got rocking. And I think they're creating an identity for themselves tonight that the way they're going to be, they're going to be a tough, gritty, hardworking, tough D hockey team. It's going to have, you know, they're going to have to work hard for goals, but they're going to they're going to win their fair share of games. So it's been fun watching this tonight. I mean, it's been an interesting hockey game. Huber was thought he was on the way to the shutout but a great goal got past him there to tie things up and probably the only people in the rink that are kind of disappointed about OT is the Maple Grove and Edina those guys are getting anxious they've been warming up and <laughs> you know you think you're on a schedule when you're going to be able to take the ice and then you see the game before you go just a little bit of extra time there we see the Crimson guys getting set to uh, to play in the championship now obviously they've got a, a Tough task against a very good Edina team, but Maple Grove, they've got a lot of young talent on that team, and I think they're going to be fun to watch, not only tonight, yeah. but this season yeah. long and just into the future as well. But the talent they got coming back is pretty doggone good. The K Boys are back, and uh, they think they found themselves a pretty good goaltender coming back, and uh, the young talent they got is pretty skilled. They have had some pretty good Bantam AA teams over the past couple of years, and that uh, should be interesting to see what they got tonight so you're going to get your 51 minutes tonight boys don't worry about it just going to start a little later no big deal and it's always fun within the first two games of your season playing the gold standard the Adina Hornets and some people are going to get mad for you saying that but let's face it they've won a lot of state tournaments and you know, you know what they're always going to bring to the rink so that'll be a great second game to watch tonight. So Danny Frag has done a, a solid job in net here tonight for Wyzetta as uh, Trevor Wong had to face a lot of shots last night and Frag uh, done a good job here. So to the best of my understanding that this will be just a normal overtime period since it's yeah. not a championship game there wouldn't I don't believe that there would go to shootout after no. this it would just be a tie uh, you know third place I think is, is, is the plan is. And it won't be recorded as a win on their sky on their records. It, it will be recorded as a tie, I believe. Well, yeah. but if somebody wins it outright in overtime, then it would be a win. Would it be? Yeah. Every regular season game okay. that's overtime would be a win. All right. So it dumped on in here. Trojans getting it in. They want to see if they can kind of carry that momentum from scoring late here. And Holy Family would like to uh, see if they can't sneak one in after holding the lead for a good chunk of this game and then seeing that lead go away in the last minute of regulation. Benanimi carrying it, drops it over left side. Here's a shot that sails high and wide. Charchenko back to gather it. And sent back into the YZ zone where it's stopped by Fraga there looking for North. Michael North up the left wing here for YZ. Floats it into the corner as they finish a change. Oops, referee getting in the way a little bit there as Holy Family tried to break the puck out. Now sent around to Fairchild. Fairchild gloves and drops it here, trying to get that pass away. There's too much traffic and then dumped out. And this will not quite get there for icing. And then trying to throw it at the net. Opportunity and close by Fraga was out of the net, looking to clear that one. And out at the blue line, they were thinking, I'm just going to zip this one in before he can get back. 
Didn't quite work out that way, but a little bit of an anxious moment. That would have been a bad night for Frega. Boy, after the game he's played, they have it in that way. Goes up out of play. We'll get a face-off coming up in the Holy Family zone. Well, all of a sudden, right out of the gates, the fire is just uh, putting on a little bit of a show. They got some legs underneath them and really started pushing hard in the Moisetta zone. See if they can get this opened up and get a little more freewheeling. They'd rather play the game this way in this period. Thrown back toward the net. Huber gloves and drops. And there's another time of hitting the official with it. Oh, nice check. Angled him off nicely there as Wilson at center got run into the boards right on the way. Is that a hockey logo there? The literal definition of getting rubbed out. Nice check. Tommy Bergsland uh, is going to have a big role to play, as we said, for the YZ Trojans this year as a defenseman. Off the draw now, YZ controlling. Davison carrying it in, throwing one at the net that missed. And now they come off the wall with the two on one. Here's a shot on oh, the goal. Nice. Michael North. There the game winner for Wyzetta. Boy, on a turnover. You know, a mental mistake, but boy, a turnover. And what a beautiful play by Wyzetta. That was just, we haven't seen one put together that tonight by the Wyzetta Trojans. And they get the opportunity here in overtime, and they bury a beauty in the upper left-hand corner of the net. No fault to you, but that was just a clean, clean goal play. What a beautiful shot. Michael North getting mobbed here. The night ends on a good note for Wyzetta. They trailed for a good chunk of the game from late in the first until the last minute of the third. Yeah. They get a goal with the extra attacker, then an OT. Michael North able to bury the game winner for Wyzetta. So from a, a fizzling first period start to the way they finished, things got a lot better as the game went on for Wyzetta. You see the great pass there by Gardner. And North says thank you very much and buries it. And the, the secret here was he got it off really quick before you even have a chance to get a look at it and get himself in position. Beautiful shot, beautiful play. Nice play by the by the Trojans. Got off to a really slow start and really fought themselves back and did a great job to get the win tonight. So a good start to the evening here in the third place game as Wyzetta winning it two to one in overtime to take third here in the varsity tournament and uh, again a reminder watch for the Maple Grove Edina championship game as we'll come back to Plymouth Ice Center for live coverage of that one well that's it for this telecast for Dan Ficken John Jacobson and all of our CCX crew MJ Wilcox your final and third place game why is that a two holy family one in overtime <laughs>